Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This video is about power factor improvement. Now the question is that why we need to improve the power factor. We know that in case of AC circuits we have three different types of power. Apparent power denoted by S. Active power denoted by P which is given as Vi. Cos phi S is given as V into I and we have reactive power which is given by Vi sin phi. So apparent power is the power which is actually withdrawn from the supply side. Active power is the power which is actually consumed by the load while this reactive power is the power which is consumed in charging and discharging of the inductor or the capacitor which is present in the system. So when we have inductive loads, so the with the increase in the inductive load, the consumption of reactive power increases. And most of the loads are actually inductive in nature. So if we take the example of domestic load, we can see that we have washing machines, we have air conditioners or refrigerators. In all of them, we have the motors. And all these motors are inductive in nature. Also at the same time, if we look in at the industrial loads, where we need to drive the loads with the help of some motors, most of the motors which are used, they are induction motors. Again, induction motors have inductive nature. So both at domestic or at industrial level, the power factor is actually very low. So when power factor is low, it means the power which is actually consumed by the load that is very less while the power which is used in charging and discharging of the inductors that is quite high. So power factor is actually in, in, improved so that we can in, improve the power consumed by the load or we can increase this. So when we have most of the load as inductive nature, the power factor can be improved by adding a capacitor in parallel with the load. So best example for this one is to use a tank circuit. Now tank circuit is that when we have a coil connected in parallel with capacitor. This type of circuit is known as tank circuit. They are connected in parallel and here we say that we have a voltage source. This capacitance is a variable capacitance. The resistance are inductance L. So when they are connected in parallel, the current withdrawn by the RL branch, let's say it is denoted by IL, while the current withdrawn by capacitor is written as IC. Now what we can do, we can actually improve the power factor. Now how we can improve the power factor for that, let's first write the value of IC. IC is voltage across the capacitor that will be V upon XC. Now I am talking about the magnitude only, not about the phase angle. We know that XC is equal to 1 upon omega C. So, IC is equals to omega C V. So, if we increase the value of capacitance, the capacitive current magnitude will increase. Now, let us draw the phasor diagram for this. Since it is a parallel circuit, so voltage is considered as reference. Capacitive current that will lead the voltage by 90 degree and IL this is a current flowing through series RL branch so it will lag behind the voltage by angle phi L. Now what we can see that the resultant current of IC this one is IC and IL Let's say this is current I1. This one is lagging behind this voltage by phi1. 
though this phi 1 is less than phi l. So, when phi 1 is less than phi l, so obviously cos phi 1 is more than cos of phi l. Hence, the power factor is improved. Now, if we increase the magnitude of this IC. So, when we increase the magnitude of IC, we can say we have another current I2 which is in same phase with the voltage. Now, how can we increase the value of IC? By increasing the value of capacitance. If the frequency is constant and the supply voltage is constant. If we increase the capacitance value, the magnitude of IC will increase. Let us say it was IC1, this one is IC2. If we further increase the value of capacitance, we can have current IC3. So, IC3 current will lead to the resultant current I3 which will be leading the voltage by angle phi 3 because phi 2 is 0. So, this is how we can change the power factor that we can improve the power factor from low to high then to unity and then to a leading power factor. Now, the question is that if we have to find out that what should be the value of the capacitance for the improvement of power factor from one value to another value, how to calculate that? For that, let us say P is the active power, which is not going to change. We can say this is the power consumed by the load. For example, a load is consuming 2 kilowatt. So, that will remain same. So, this one is actually constant. Phi 1 is cos phi 1 is initial power factor and we want to improve this power factor to another value cos phi 2. This is the improved power factor. Now, we know that P is equals to S cos phi. Since power is, active power is constant, if phi is varying, then cos phi is varying. So, that will lead to change in the apparent power. We can write P is equals to S1 cos phi 1. Also, P is equals to S2 cos phi 2. At the same time, we also know that P is equal to J plus Q. So, when S is changing, P is remaining constant. So, what will change? The reactive power. Q is Q1 is equals to S1 sin phi 1. Q2 is S2 sin phi 2. Now, from here, we can use the value of S1 as P upon cos phi 1. Similarly, from here we can use the value of S2 as P upon cos phi 2. So, the reactive power requirement when the initial power factor was cos phi 1 is P tan phi 1. And this reactive power requirement will change to new value that is P tan phi 2 when we add the capacitor. So, the rating of capacitor which is either in VAR or KVAR denoted by QC is given as change in power change in reactive power from initial to new value. Earlier the reactive power requirement was more, now it is reduced to Q2 since we are interested in improving the power factor. 
so we know the value of q1 is p10 phi1 q2 is p10 phi2 so rating of capacitor is p10 phi1 minus 10 phi2 so basically the purpose of capacitor which we are adding in parallel with the load is to compensate the reactive power locally instead of withdrawing it from the supply it is compensated locally the reactive power requirement by this load is supplied by this capacitor this is a power uh, actually purpose of the power factor improvement so now this is the rating of capacitor if we have to find out the value of capacitance we know that this qc is also equal to i square into xc i is so ic square into xc ic is v upon xc so it becomes v square upon xc or v square omega c or the value of capacitance can be calculated from the expression c is equals to qc upon omega v square so the problems for the power factor improvement they are quite easy because we have to directly use these formulas there is nothing which is complicated so let's take first example a single phase load of 5 kilowatt operates at a power factor of 0.6 lagging it is required to improve this power factor to 0.95 lagging by connecting a capacitor across the load calculate the capacitor kv rating so kvar rating so active power is given 5 kilowatt this 5 into 10 is to power 3 watts cos 5 1 is 0.6 cos 5 2 is 0.95 correspondingly we can find out the value of phi as cos inverse 0 0.653.13 and phi 2 as 18.195 so we can calculate the capacitor rating qc using formula p 10 phi 1 minus 10 phi 2 p is 5 into 10 raised to power 3 10 phi 1 is 53.13 and 10 phi 2 is 18.195 so this gives the value of capacitor rating as 5.02 kva r let's take one more example when connected to a 120 volt 60 hertz power line 
a load absorbs 4 kilowatt at a lagging power factor of 0.8 find the value of capacitance necessary to raise power factor to 0.98 so 0.95 lagging so now we need to find out the value of capacitance again power is given 4 kilowatt so 4000 watts cos 51 is 0 0.8 so 51 is 36.87 degrees cos 52 is 0 0.95 52 is 18.195 degrees we know the formula for capacitance is qc upon omega v square which is p 10 phi 1 minus 10 phi 2 upon 2 pi f v square f is also given 60 hertz v is 120 volts so let's use all these values 4000 10 36.87 minus 10 18.195 upon 2 pi into 60 into 120 square so this gives a value of capacitance as 310.44 micro farad so i hope this video is helpful for you in the next video i will be starting with the three phase circuits thanks for watching the video